Hi, this is Design and Manufacture National 5. And in this lesson, we're going to revise what we know about materials. In total, what we're going to look at is we're going to revise um, wood, metal and plastic. And then towards the end of the presentation, we'll look at some model answers, how you would answer a materials type question in an exam. Two things to say before we begin. Elsewhere on this website or on mrsheridan.org you'll find the National 5 material data sheet. Okay? Make sure you've got a colour copy of that to hand. It contains everything you need to know about the various materials that we're going to talk about. And also, it's likely that you covered materials to some degree in S3. Those notes are still valid even now, so dig them out and make sure you've kept them and refer to them if possible. We'll start off with metals. Okay, let's look at metal revision. Why on earth do designers choose to use metals? What are the advantages and disadvantages? What could possibly be so good about using metals? Well, there's a number of advantages of them. They're very strong. Metals are incredibly strong. That's why we can build battleships with them in buildings and stadiums, airplanes. Very strong. They're very easy to recycle. Pretty much all metals can be melted down and reshaped and reused. A metal is an excellent conductor of heat and electricity. That means that it allows heat and electricity to pass, to pass through it with ease. And metals are also able to be shaped into many different forms. They can be moulded, extruded, bent, hammered, flattened, forged, all sorts of reasons why metal is easy to work with. The disadvantages of metals... There are some. They are ultimately a finite resource. They will run out once they've been mined, once they've been pulled out of the ground, they're gone. Ferrous metals, that is metals that contain iron, they will rust and other metals also corrode as well. Some metal finishes can tarnish over time. Even if they're not easy to corrode, metal over time has a habit of getting tarnished and a little bit beat up and manky looking. And one of the other disadvantages of metals is that they can be expensive and difficult to work with. Now that's at odds with what I said a minute ago that said that they can be um, shaped into many different forms. They can do, that's easy, but you need a lot of heat and a lot of pressure and furnaces and, and all kinds of factory tools like that. There are two broad families of metals that we're interested in in design and manufacture. Ferrous metals and non-ferrous metals. The ferrous ones contain iron and are therefore magnetic and prone to rust. So we can always test for a ferrous metal. You know, if, if we suspect that a, a metal has been covered by paint and we want to know if it's ferrous, we can put a magnet to it and see if it will be attracted to it. We've got iron and cast iron, mild steel, high carbon steel and stainless steel. The truth is that the only true metal in amongst that green list is the iron and cast iron one. The rest of them are alloys, meaning they're a mixture of different metals or different elements. Mild steel, for example, is a mixture of an alloy, sorry, of um, iron and carbon, as is high carbon steel, sometimes called tool steel. And stainless steel has iron and carbon and a little bit of chromium in it to make it mirror-like and shiny. Non-ferrous metals, they contain no iron. So all the other metals in the world would be considered non-ferrous. They still corrode, but it's not called rust. Rust is a special term of corrosion that only applies to the ferrous metals. There are three that we're interested in. Aluminium, the most common, the most abundant metal on earth. Also brass, which is an alloy, and copper. Let's turn our attention to plastics now and ask ourselves the same question, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using plastics in a design? Well, designers, as we know, love plastics, and for the last 40, 50, even plus years, designers have been designing and releasing billions of products based on plastic. We know that because we've got a terrible plastic waste problem to deal with now. The advantages of plastics are that they're strong and lightweight, so you get strength and you get really low weight as well. You can colour plastics, make them any colour you like, or you can make them transparent. They're incredibly versatile. 
we can put them to many uses and plastics are truly easily shaped and moulded. The disadvantages are that some are brittle, like acrylic, cracks easily and scratches easily. Most plastics are not biodegradable, that means that they won't effectively turn to dust, that they will stay as plastic in the environment and in the ecosystem for a very, very, very long time. The manufacture of plastics contains a lot of pollution and a lot of polluting steps and stages. And some plastics are quite easily scratched as well. We talk about two broad families of plastics. We talk about the thermosets and the thermoplastics at National 5 level. Here's a little quiz to see how many of these you can correctly classify as either thermoplastic or thermoset. What about a plastic which can be heated and shaped only once? You can heat it and you can form it, but if you try to heat it and form it a second time, it either chars or it goes on fire. That is, of course, the very definition of a thermoset plastic. ABS, the plastic used for Lego bricks, crash helmets, PlayStation controllers, etc, etc. Almost like a wonder plastic. Thermoplastic or thermoset? It's a thermoplastic. Polypropylene, the plastic of DVD cases and computer game box cases and anything where there's a hinge that's been kind of been stamped into the plastic. And that is, of course, a thermoplastic. What about a plastic which can be heated and shaped many times? You can keep heating it up. You can keep remoulding it, reshaping it. Really easy to recycle these. It's, of course, the definition of a thermoplastic. Acrylic. It's likely that you've used acrylic at some point in school. Transparent, easily scratched. It's a thermoplastic. Melamine formaldehyde. Now, this is sometimes shortened to melamine and it's used in uh, outdoor or sort of barbecue plates, picnic plates, things like that. If you're sitting at a school desk and it's got a kind of plasticky hard coating on the desk, that's probably melamine formaldehyde as well. And that is a thermoset. We've got urea formaldehyde. Urea formaldehyde is used in um, electrical fittings. And it's also, as a resin, as a kind of glue, it's also the stuff that holds MDF and chipboard together as well. That's a thermoset. And finally, we've got polystyrene, a versatile plastic that comes as packaging or solid cups or model kits, which is a thermoplastic. Let's move on to wood. Take a look at the different types of wood that we've got here. Hardwoods. Hardwoods are, are woods which come from trees that have got leaves, or trees, probably more properly, that are deciduous. Trees which shed their leaves in winter. Things like oak and beech and ash and things like that. So if a tree loses its leaves in the winter, then the wood that you get from it is called a hardwood. But hardwoods are not always hard. Softwoods come from trees which are coniferous, trees which have Needles, pine needles or, or little conifer leaves. And they're not always soft. Finally, our third category is manufactured boards. These are big sheets of wood-like materials. They're not strictly speaking wood, but they're made from wood. They're made in factories. They use wood waste, like uh, wood dust, wood, wood fibres, chips, uh, things like that, and glue, which tends to be urea formaldehyde. With, and they can make things like um, MDF and chipboard. And things like that. Because the problem is that wood that comes from trees is, is usually stick shaped. So if you want flat sheets for doors or desktops or things like that, we need to go to a manufactured board. Advantages and disadvantages of wood are taken under consideration by designers. The advantages are that wood is strong and reasonably lightweight. It is very versatile. We can do lots of things with wood and put it to many uses. It's very easy to work with. You can work with wood with common workshop tools. And if you manage the, pro the forest properly, it can be a sustainable resource, which means it will go on and on and last forever. Wood has many disadvantages though. If it's wet, many of them will degrade and rot away. There are some exceptions, but generally speaking, if wood is going to be outside, we generally have to treat it with some sort of protective coating. Wood is also flammable, will easily catch fire under the right conditions. 
The logging and the manufacture associated with wood can deplete forests. And wood is not very stable. It can swell and it can shrink as the temperature and the humidity in the air fluctuates. Then wood will change size. Had we been in the classroom, we would be doing a little quiz about woods and manufactured boards. But we'll skip over that for now. Now then, let's talk about how you write about materials. A typical exam question would be to present you with a product and ask you to choose a material which would be suitable for that product. It will then ask you to write a justification and give two reasons why a material is suitable. So there are three marks up for grabs here. The first mark is for a correct choice of material and the remaining two marks are for a well-written justification. You always write in full sentences, okay? And what you tend to do is you tend to talk about the material as it's being used. Now, this relates to a very important rule when answering questions in design and manufacture. If you're given the photograph of a product, then you must write about the product in the photograph. You must not write in general terms. So, for example, we've got a bench vice there. Let's take a look at this. Here are some model answers for the bench vice and for the pergola. Let's do the bench vice first. A suitable material for the bench vice is cast iron. Cast iron can be easily cast and machined into shape. It's also strong and tough and could withstand being bashed by tools. Two things to note about this answer. You could have chosen something other than cast iron. You've got to give good reasons for your choice though. The second thing to say about this answer is it notice how my answer is about the vice and it's about the use of the vice. In other words, I've made a point about saying that the vice is going to be bashed by tools. I'm talking about the thing in the photograph. Let's go on to number two, the pergola. So we know in this answer, we have to notice something about the photograph and talk about the thing in the photo. A suitable material for the pergola is oak. Oak is hard and durable which would give the pergola a long life. Oak is also easy to work with, and so the various joints would be easy to create. So, two things to say about that again. There are other answers other than oak. You could have chosen something else. But your justification must make mention of the properties of the material and talk about something in the photograph. Talk about the, the object itself. So now you know the strategy for answering questions about materials. There are tons of them in the past papers. Go and have a try.